Okay, welcome back to the second part of our lesson on parent functions. Uh, this particular video should not be of any great length. Uh, it's simply being done to set the stage for work that will occur in the future. Okay, so when you come back into the classroom on uh, Monday or whatever day it is that we happen to pick this up, we're going to be focusing on these terms which I have listed along the left hand side. Okay, uh, some of these terms uh, you're likely familiar with or remember some information with regards to them. Our task uh, at home and at class is to get familiar with these particular uh, terms and also to see them in context. And the context will be one that's more graphical. So how do these particular terms apply to the graphs that I'm going to be seeing? So to give you an example of how we're going to approach this is <clears throat> I'm going to hand out um, a series of sheets that have this particular frame to it where you have four quarters and a circle in the middle. And we're going to use these uh, in order to define particular terms. So why don't we focus on the term domain? Okay. And a definition. It may not be the only one, there are a few of them, but we could say that the, <clears throat> the domain is the set of all first elements in a set of ordered pairs. Well, we could also say they're the x's of all xy's. As far as characteristics are concerned, these are not definitions, okay? Characteristics would be something like this, okay? Uh, we could say something about the domain of a variety of functions, linear, quadratic, and sinusoidal, which are the trig functions, all have a domain of x belonging to r. Um, r is the real number system. And this symbol here, or we have as epsilon means belongs to. Uh, and the domain of a function can be restricted using an inequality statement. Okay, so you might be familiar with using symbols such as, uh, or notations, uh, x is greater than or equal to uh, a particular number. Okay, that would be an example of a restriction. And some examples. These are a little more concrete. They're not as general as the characteristics. This is where we pick specific examples and study them in the context of the word that we're given. So let's say we have the parent function f at x is x squared. We could write that the domain of all such functions or quadratics as x belongs to r. And you can also see the same thing being written for the the function g, or g at x equals sine x. Non-examples sometimes are really counter-examples. They're things that are entirely contrary to the word that we're studying. And for instance, if we went about reporting the range as opposed to the domain, that would clearly be a non-example. Okay, so just in review, do recall that the parent graph of y equals x squared is a parabola centered at zero, opening upwards. So the domain must have f at x or y being greater than or equal to zero. Sine x, the parent function for all trigonometric functions, has a maximum of one and a minimum value of negative one. Hence the reason why we say that all the y values must lie in between negative 1 and positive 1. Okay, so that's the general idea behind what you will be working with. Now when we get into class, the particular terms that don't necessarily need much attention are going to be the y-intercept, zeros, okay? These are not going to be approached. Asymptotes, I believe, is one that we will cover. 
but if you would like to prepare yourself in advance for that class and start generating ideas, you could create a frame in your notes as such. And if necessary for your own learning, you could look at y-intercept and zeros to create your own cards. And you could even go further if you'd like to look at asymptotes and all of these other terms. I've given a page reference in your textbook so that you can use it as a resource for building your cards.